I always like doing something I haven't done before or haven't done recently. Keep, keep changing it and keep mixing it up. Yeah. That's what I love to do. Yeah. You seem like you had a, a, a good fun with this one, with the cast and with the character and everything. Yeah, everything like about it was package. everything about it was fun. Yeah. yeah. And they knew the story, which is a cracking story. When it when it uh, happened, I thought they're going to make a great film of this, and I hope I'm in it. And so when the offer came through, I'd already decided so it was an easy one. And then. And it's a working title and the director, James Marsh, and the writer, Joe Pennell. A dream combination, really. And then, and then with that, this cast, easy, easy to do. You know, and when it, to be working with Tom Courtney and Michael Caine, that was my childhood dream. You know, I couldn't, be, couldn't imagine it at all. But brilliant. One of the great things I liked about the movie was that it, it has the highs, but also deals with the aftermath and all these guys trying to deal yeah. with what's happening. I mean, it gave a great angle to the to the film and something for you guys to explore. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it's, you know, it's a bit it's almost uh, somebody was saying it's a bit like Del Boy, really. You know, they <laughs> they get it wrong, don't they? And that's what that's what makes it interesting, really, yeah. and funny. You know, how they get it wrong. So, so there's a, a tension there and a, and a humour and it. Uh, it's yeah, it's all. Uh, there's always a lot of when there's a, so much money at stake. It always makes for a makes for a, an interesting drama. There's a lot of tension, but also out of the tension comes the humour. It's great. Do you know that I've completely forgotten how to do Michael Caine? <laughs> Except I haven't, of course, because I've studied him and I've noticed that of late he's got much slower in his delivery and also that he takes a breath. In between, I'm just checking he's not there. That's right Jim Broadbent, I can't do him. Harry does a good impersonation. Oh, Hello, he? baby Jesus. <laughs> I can't do it. But, <laughs> uh, but to, I mean, to be in a film with him and to, with all these amazing. It was actors, the first I mean, scene, day one, day one, scene one. Me and Mr. Micklewhite. <laughs> like, oh, does he, cool. Does he bring yeah. it up? Does he bring it up? No. no. I did a little bit for the crew before oh, he came on set. Of course. You know. <laughs> and uh, and there he was. <laughs> Intimidating. Uh, you know, these guys are my heroes. Um, and, uh, you know, look, I, I, yeah, we, we had lunch yesterday while we were doing press and, and I'm still pinching myself that I'm allowed in a room with them, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I, you know, I, listen, I'll, this will be probably the greatest work experience I'll, I'll ever have. Um, and so I, I kind of can't even really believe it looking around. It's, it feels a bit bizarre yeah. but I mean just the best 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 experience of my career I'm the wife you're the wife so I wasn't in the heights unfortunately would you have liked to have been there of course I would I wanted to be one of those getting in there doing this ridiculous antics at a ridiculous age you could be you could have been the heavy <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me ask you about sharing the screen with Sir Michael well, I mean it must have been a great experience I mean you only share a couple of scenes but it must have been such a rewarding experience oh to yes with. I mean I've known Michael for years you know like most of them our paths have crossed many times but I've never worked with him before so on the assumption that it's never too late I'm the missus <laughs> first thing that really appealed to me was actually the writer Joe Pennell uh, James Marsh and of course Michael, they were attached to it and that's, you know you've got a good recipe there, yeah. so you want to go to work. The script was a good script and then everyone else came along and it was proper, you know. I think he was quite nasty but he, is, he kept his nastiness in check. So he's probably just getting a bit too old now to be nasty. I think maybe in his, in his youth he had, had been a little bit more nasty than he is now. But I think, you know, get older and wiser and not, not quite so nasty <laughs> as you get older. I like the fact that he, he sort of had his doubts, you know, and he had his, you know, he, he had responsibilities elsewhere that he was thinking, if I do this, it might help me with those things. If I do it, it might actually compromise my ability to help me mum and stuff like that. So, I, you know, I, I did, um, I understood that, yeah, completely. I think I asked you the right time because he is now right behind you. Who? <laughs> Oh, hello, Michael. The, the, the beauty of this film, I think, as it's turned out, is that the, the sort of race, Cockneys, and they're all old. They were so old. I mean, Brian, who I play, was 73. Oh, well, it, 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 was, it was very easy because although it was based on reality, I wasn't allowed to see him and speak to him. Uh, and so I never knew him, but I... I Come so on, Michael, get the move think. on, Michael, for God's sake. Yeah, and, and, I, and, and I, you know, because James is, is well-renowned well for being a documentarian, one of the reasons I think he was a great choice for this project is we weren't... There really was... It's the, the, the story is so interesting and potentially so funny 
that you kind of don't need to to kind of write towards that too much. And Joe didn't do that. And and James, of course, just can just document what we understand happened from hundreds of pages of transcript. And the idea being, which I think is really smart, is if you just tell it as truthfully as you possibly can from what we know to be true, it will be funny at times, it will be compelling, um, and and hope and hopefully you'll also learn a little bit about a heist that we all have heard of. Yeah, it's a great group of actors. I mean, in terms yeah. of like British cinema. I mean, well, you know, the best, they're a bit you know? limited. Most of them, they haven't got my range, <laughs> really. It's, no, it's, brilliant though. But I'm joking, of course. But I mean, it must have been great to be to be around them because it, oh, it seems fantastic. like that you, even though it was like it's quite serious filming places, mm. you all had a, a good time making it together. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a very enjoyable process, and you know, everybody got on and we had a, a great time. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, the underlying thing is it's, it's quite serious. Serious robbery, isn't it? So <laughs> you know, serious. I know there's a there's a sort of moral argument you know you could have with yourself about it, but it was as a process, yeah, it was great for us. What was it? What attracted me to the part was the cast yeah. and James Marsh, obviously, who I know I've worked with before, who I who is just a fantastic director. Um, but then you know, once I once I got over that, I guess I was excited to play the one guy that we get to invent a little bit about, the one guy that we know very little about, um, and try and you know also make sense of this one character that is you know, generations younger than the rest of the people he, he uh, goes to work with. So that, there was something interesting about that that I, uh, that I was quite nervous about. I didn't really understand what that was. And then we, we kind of found a way to explain it. And and, um, and, uh, and it was a fun character. It's very different from Matt Murdock. Yeah. God, if you can't enjoy this job, you, you, well, you might as well get out of the game, you know? This, you're working with a cream, some of the nicest men I've ever worked with, and uh, had a ball, you know? Yeah. You know? I mean, we've seen the kind of heist movie before, but one of the things I liked about it is that it deals with the aftermath with, with these It does, guys but it also deals with age. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I know it's a nice movie and it's, it's all that, but it's a, it, there's a lot more going on about it, I think. About it. I think that's why it's funny. You know, people look at it and go, oh, yeah, half right, you know, getting that in the yard, and you're still digging holes, you know? Yeah. And, and I think that's got a lot to do with the film as well, you know? And this is the first time I've worked with a director for a second time, and that was really, really enjoyable because you already have a dialogue and you already trust each other. And the fact that they've hired you again kind of gives you a bit of confidence. They obviously don't think you're shit because they've hired you again. Um, and, uh, and so I was, um, you know, I, I really enjoyed having that a new kind of relationship with a director, which is one where on day one we were already pals, you know, and, and he can be frank with me. And that was, that was really, I found that very freeing. But a fan of David Lynch's Dune, which he was, oh, of right. course, in all those years ago. Um, do you remember much of that about that experience? And did you know that they're making uh, making a new a new version? I know. I can't believe it. I want to play the grandmother. Having played the mother of the universe, I now want to play the grandmother of the mother of the universe. Yeah. <laughs> I, I spoke to you yesterday about the Daredevil trailer. Yeah. Have you now seen it? I have. Yeah. Have yeah. You, what did you think of it? I, I liked it. I was excited about it. I could, first of all, I couldn't figure out. I couldn't remember it. I was like, when was that? And I and I, I think they may have done something with the, I think that in the show that that dialogue happens at a different point or something like that. Right. But yeah. But I like it. It's cool. Eerie, isn't it? What was the brief when you were told they wanted you to come aboard and, and do a song for it? Deliver something for the end of the movie that is full of energy and uh, fun and good 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 vibes. Yeah. Did you? I mean, it must be strange coming onto a movie. Uplifting. I, 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 uplifting. Yeah, that was definitely a word I got. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, coming onto a movie after it's finished. I mean, do, do you get a sense of the movie and stuff like that when you're coming on to do the score? Do you see it in kind of bits and pieces? So, um, you know, obviously, uh, I, 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 the score was uh, very much in place uh, when I saw a rough cut of the film. But I think when you're contributing a song to the end of a movie, you know, I've done that uh, two or three times. I did a Clint Eastwood film called Gran Torino and I kind of really wrote and did something very specific for this. For this film, it was very much, they wanted a, they wanted a vibe and uh, I use it as an opportunity to um, create something. You know, when you watch this film, you realize that these characters are, um, <laughs> are somewhat, they eat themselves, you know? And so I, I wanted to contribute something quite ironic to the film. You know, it's very much a kind of male bravado film and that male bravado falls apart. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey you guys! Hey you guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey you 